Hello, welcome to Citizens Forum. It is Wednesday, March the 13th. I'd like to start by thanking our volunteer crew and the Shaw staff that makes this program happen every couple of weeks. Uh, we're going to be talking in the first segment about, I think mainly about climate change. My guests are Rebecca Wolf Gage and Emma Jane Burian. They're with a group called Our Earth, Our Future. Uh, which to me sounds like a very nice name and very important. Um, and I think I can say the group is focusing on the issue of climate change and protecting the planet and et cetera. So maybe you can just say a little bit about the group and how you got involved, whoever. Yeah, so I founded um, what was first called uh, uh, the Victoria Youth Climate Strike. Um, and that was, uh, w we went to the legislature the first Friday of every month uh, and we started to strike. Um, and then we decided that we had to do more than just climate striking. Um, so I uh, organized an Enviro School to teach kids about uh, climate change. Um, this is where you got yeah. involved. And then I got involved <laughs> with that and I was like, this is so awesome. Um, that like Rebecca's doing this um, and then we in that uh, the we invited the mayor to speak uh, the mayor of Victoria Mary Lisa helps um, and she was like this is so awesome I really want to support you and so she suggested that um, we meet with her the first Friday of every month before we strike at City Hall um, and so we meet with her now for an hour every month and she helps us and we work on initiatives it's really amazing and it's really nice to have that support so I don't I think I heard a little bit about the strikes when they started. How long have they been going on? Uh, about three months. Okay. And what is a climate strike? Um, so a climate strike is uh, you go to your local uh, representative's office, so like council, um, MP's office, MLA's office. For us, we're really lucky. We're in the capital, so we have the legislature buildings. Um, and <coughs> you skip school and you you go there and you have signs and you protest. Sounds great. <laughs> Sounds great. Yeah. So this has been happening every a month. first Friday, first of, Friday every of, month. of every month for three months. Is now I've heard these things are happening worldwide. Is mm -hmm. this connected to that? Yeah, definitely. Uh, uh, Greta Thunberg, the founder yes. of the whole strike, um, her her motion became an international motion and. I learned about her and decided to act. So, I mean, here we are. Personally, I think things don't look that great mm -hmm. for not only your future, but even my future. Mm -hmm. So, what, do you have any ideas of what we can do to start to move things ahead? Yeah, well, I think that um, the biggest thing is to not lose hope um, because I think it's important to panic. <laughs> That's the first thing, is that panic. But in that panic, you still don't need to lose hope because, um, yes, the IPCC has given us 12 years. Um, but there's still a lot of things we can do if we do it now. And that's why we're so, um, that's why we are putting an emphasis on taking action and making governments um, make decisions that are going to impact our future and say, look it, this is what we want to see. Um, because there it is a lot of things. There's a lot of things that they don't do, which sucks, but there's also things that they definitely can do to help and to, um, we can, like we're not, it's not too late yet, but it will be if we don't that, act. That being said, we shouldn't keep all hope because if we just exactly. keep hope, then like mm -hmm. everyone's going to be like, okay, it's going to be fine after mm -hmm. these 12 like, years. Like we should panic, yeah. but yeah. in that yeah. panicking, there's there's a small little bit of hope. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, are, are people your age, um, I mean, I, I think what's going to have to happen, the things are going to have to change dramatically. I mean, I think, do cars have a future in your way of looking at the world? Electric cars. Electric, electric cars. cars. Yeah, yeah, I'm not even sure about electric cars, but mm -hmm. The okay. city of Victoria is trying to work towards carbon neutrality by 2030, mm -hmm. and their goal is to have um, all electric cars by 2050 on the road. Um, and so, yeah, it's definitely something. Um, how about people your age in general? What's the, I know, <laughs> you know, just in general, there seems to be a mix. A lot of people are very concerned, but 
nobody seems to know exactly what to do and very little seems to be happening. But maybe stuff is happening, I don't know. Um, I find that most of my classmates aren't as involved or committed uh, to environmental uh, like act, act, uh, <laughs> activism, activism as I am. Um, and some of them don't really care about climate change and don't think it affects Canada. Um, and it won't until a while from now. Um, and But I know that some of them are interested in getting involved, um, it, but they don't really want to speak out about that. Yeah, I agree. Like I feel like a lot of people my age, I think, I don't know, it may be a little bit different from our age because we are a little bit mm -hmm. apart, but I know that a lot of teenagers, like there's some people that are like, yeah, it's either like they're really for it or they're not. And there's no really like middle. And I think it's hard to, yeah, people just have their own things and they don't really, they feel like it's not an issue. Like they're like, oh, like that's going to happen. I don't want to worry about that. Like, yeah. Yeah. Well, I guess it's, uh, we'll all see, you know, how things, uh, how things go. Um, if, if, uh, if you too were the premier of the province, so for example, um, I don't know if you know about the site, the issue of liqu liquefied natural gas, oh, LNG, and fracking. <laughs> okay, so I mean, here we are. The party I'm a member of, for some strange reason, is pushing ahead with all of this and, you know, quite happy to destroy all of our planet, NDP, John Horgan. Um, so what would you do if, uh, or what would you, not what would you tell him, but if you guys were, if, if you could, yeah, I mean, if you represented the public, what would you tell this guy? Do you want me to start? Yeah. Yeah, so I think that the main thing that I would do is, first of all, like, look at all the options. I think you have to be really educated about, and I think a lot of the times we hear in the media, we hear like, this is the best solution. And we don't necessarily know what that means. And I think that um, we need to also educate the public about like, these are the consequences and this is what's gonna happen because there's so many ads that go out there like, oh, this is the best option. This is going to help produce um, more renewable energy sources. But that's not necessarily guaranteed. And I think you have to look at the whole picture. And I think that governments have to be really realistic with themselves and see like, look, we're focusing on a single story here and we need to look at the bigger picture. And it doesn't, it doesn't really matter what type of uh, like fossil fuel it is. We need to like stop using mm -hmm. all of them if we actually want to like save our future and like stop climate change um, and like I know lots of governments um, think well we're only a small percentage of like the population what can we do uh, like if, if we stop and no one else stops then yes. doesn't really make a difference but every government's thinking that and so if every government stops then they've stopped and mm -hmm. and also like even if we stop fossil fuels even if we stop all our missions right today will still feel the effects of climate change. It just won't be slightly as severe, but it will still be because we're still using them. So it just keeps getting into this vicious cycle. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, in terms, uh, you know, very often when we talk about environmental issues, the other side says jobs. But of course we all want jobs. We all want good jobs for everybody. Um, the jobs just have to come in a, in a different field, and I'm sure we can do that. Uh, I don't think there's any question we can just start to do things differently. And definitely, I, I have cousins in Alberta, um, and so they're very committed to the oil um, because of the jobs. And so I have to consider when I'm thinking about uh, the oil and the pipelines that they do need jobs, we, but we need to make uh, green jobs and renewable energy jobs uh, like easier to get. and we need more of them. Yeah, and like one of the things with Alberta is that it's not just oil that they run off of. Oil right now is their mass produced thing that they use, but Alberta actually has so much potential for other resources. They have so much agriculture, they have so much, like they have, they have capacity for wind, for yeah. solar, yeah. and one of the things right now that they're really looking into is geothermal energy. Um, and that's something that it still causes a little bit of emissions, but it's a good thing to think about in the transition period because it's way less emissions. And actually I was watching an interview on The National on CBC this week, and um, 
they they were interviewing somebody who uh, used to work in the oil and gas industry and they asked him why he switched to learning about um, geothermal and he was like because I can't keep working in a system that is going to harm my children and my future and I think that that's really important and we need to look at that it's not just the oil and gas jobs like we can find other jobs and I know that that's a really concern because it like harm like people think like right now this is my immediate thing and I'm really worried about it but I think we have to start thinking outside the box and being more um, unique with what we think about and how we how we can't just keep thinking in the past. Yeah, I have no doubt that there are very, very good solutions to the problems out there. All we have to do is, is somehow begin to do the things we have to do for everybody, not just for the few people who run the country. Um, and speaking of the people who run the country, um, how is the media <laughs> on this issue and just in general? Um, <laughs> I know that, like, I know most media's, uh, I don't want to say, that this, is, this is just a stereotype, but I know most media's, like, um, are run by someone uh, who, like, some, Someone who may not have your best interests at yeah. heart. Yeah, so. um, and so it, they they can do. Some media's can do um, uh, articles that aren't the best per se uh, in like getting out uh, like the right information or. You yeah. are very, very nice to say <laughs> that about yeah. the media. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's interesting. I think, I think we're in like a time with, uh, there's such a lot of distrust around that and around the media for do good reason. I mean, there's lots of places like you see in the U.S. especially that there's so much conflicting opinions and there's so much information that's like, what, how did they get this? Like, there's no sources to back this up. And so I think that that goes back to like citizens and people learning about like, what is a valuable source and what is, where is this information coming from and people checking um, to really look and see like, oh, this is interesting. Um, but also the fact that I think that a lot of media, like for instance, I don't know if they're necessarily trying to. I think that some media are legitimately trying to just promote like what they found or just show like findings. But I think it, yeah, it really depends. And I think it, it comes back to us like checking our sources and checking where it's coming from and seeing like, hmm, is this relevant? Yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting situation watching watching this develop, and I mean, not we don't seem to be changing at the speed that we have to change in order to protect in in order to protect our future, and I I honestly I, I'm surprised myself that humanity has is doing such a poor job on it. I, I would have thought when I was your age that if we had a crisis like this, that of course our great leadership is gonna step forward and you know, we can do this. But here we are, you know, many years later and we're not doing it. And I mean, I really, really hope that, uh, you know, that you guys and your generation can, because it's interesting times coming, that's for sure. Yeah, I know Greta Thunberg um, yeah. in her TED talk said that um, <coughs> said that when she l learned about climate change, she didn't believe like that it w it w could actually be happening because this it's such a big crisis and like wouldn't the media be covering it like every day yeah. this crisis? But they aren't. So she was like really stunned about that. I was stunned by it many many years ago myself, but now I've just come to see it. That's, that's unfortunately what they do. Uh, so, Emma and Rebecca, thank you both very much. Thank you, thank thank you for you. coming on. Thank you for so the stuff you're doing to, yeah, to, on a very important issue to try to protect everybody's future. Good luck. Thank you. Thank luck. you. Yeah. We're all going to need it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and thanks for watching this segment of Citizens Forum.